Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us take a moment to confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I encourage you to take a moment of silent reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as you love us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. <clears throat> Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of the resurrection who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the second chapter of Philippians, beginning with the fifth verse. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. From John, the 12th chapter. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God and our Savior Jesus. Amen. As Jesus enters Jerusalem with lots of fanfare, shouts of Hosanna, and palms waving and being dropped before him like a green carpet. But a few verses beyond our gospel reading, not all are happy about the event. We hear the religious leaders who wanted to dispose of Jesus declare, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. That is not so much the case today. The world has distanced itself from Jesus. Or worse, 
His name has been co-opted by people espousing their own messages, pushing even more people away. Last week, I had the privilege to sneak away to visit my wife's oldest sibling in San Antonio. Included in the trip was a stop at Texas Lutheran University for our youngest son to take a campus tour. Unlike his father, he does not like winter and is being drawn to the warmth of San Antonio and plus the love of his aunt and his uncle. On the tour, we stopped outside the chapel. The guide pointed it out, saying, this is where church is held Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but it's only from 10 to 1020. It's not very long. In fact, you don't even have to go. I think I've been there three times. <laughs> well, one of, the require, one of the requirements is you have to take a theology course. That was the first time I, I went to chapel. It wasn't bad. At that point, my sister-in-law interrupted, well, we happen to have a Lutheran pastor right here. <laughs> she physically backpedaled and then apologized. I was like, that's okay. We went on with the tour. For those who have co-opted Jesus, which I think is even worse, exalting themselves above above others. They've missed that detail in John's description of Palm Sunday. As Jesus hears the crowd announce, Hosanna! That's exactly what I wanted to hear! A child will lead us! Hosanna! Hosanna. He quickly, and hears that they are calling him King of Israel, John says, Jesus seeks out a, a donkey to go riding into Jerusalem. This is to point out that Jesus is not entering as a warrior king, but as a humble king, a servant leader. Paul's letter to the Philippians expands this view. Though Jesus was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Only then does God exalt him, giving him the name above all names so that every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. That is the type of king Jesus is. And Paul tells us, let the same mind in you that was in Christ Jesus. It's like WWJD. What would Jesus do? Let us have TLJ. Think like Jesus. Because we are children of God, disciplines, disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, we too should be humble, emptying ourselves, taking the form of a slave. There are the religious righteous who have dismissed this truth, instead exalting themselves over others, demanding that people bend their knees, if need be by force, or coercing a confession of Jesus instead of an invitation. There was a missionary from Jamaica I had the privilege to meet, and he was talking to a crowd of pastors, and he said, can you do one thing for us, for me? If you send people to Jamaica, don't have them coerce the Jamaicans into a confession for God in Jesus. Because I would let you know that for the number of strictly American Christians who have announced the number of Jamaicans that they have converted, it would total more than the population of Jamaica. Because what they came to realize is if they said the right things, they were given gifts, and they were welcome to feasts. And no, humble yourself. Be like a slave. It's more of how can I help you 
as a servant of Jesus instead of what will you say to me so I feel good about myself? I believe that is what is causing so many people to walk away from Christianity. The religious leaders were all about status and control. Instead, Jesus invited fishermen, tax collectors, ordinary people like you and me. And Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and life. I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the vine. He never said, I am the religion. Jesus fed over 5,000, gave sight to the blind, welcomed the lost and the lonely, raised Lazarus from the dead. And my post this week on Facebook says it all. Leaders don't force people to follow. They invite them on a journey. And what a journey it is. Jesus is the good shepherd, not the bad rancher. It was never supposed to be about religion. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Savior for all people through all time and all places, as Paul said, in heaven, on earth, and below the earth. At the end of the tour, the Texas Lutheran University guide came up and apologized to me again. We had a nice conversation. And then she asked, are you an alumni? No. Oh, because you could have had a third scholarship. There is one for a student attending a Lutheran church, another for being the child of a pastor, and a third if your parent is an alumni. See, there are still some perks <laughs> for following Jesus. But we will celebrate the greatest next week. Even though the days in between the world turned against Jesus, he took time to care for his disciples in an upper room in the night in which he was betrayed. Like a slave, he washed their feet. And then he emptied himself in the bread and the wine during the Last Supper. We will celebrate Monday, Thursday. And Good Friday, where the shouts from the crowd turned from <laughs> to crucify him. He became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. We will remember. All of this leads to Sunday. When those who believe the promise exclaim, He is risen! He is risen let's, let's do a, a test run for Easter again. <laughs> he is risen! He is risen indeed! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. It is our turn to be the crowd, to welcome others by announcing Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. I encourage you to share your palm branch and invite your friends to Easter Sunday and do so with the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. For all of you are members of the body of Christ. TLJ. Think like Jesus. When you arrive on Easter Sunday, leave the best parking spots for those who may be coming for the first time again. For those who only come on Christmas and Easter, you probably know many of them. Welcome them as if they come each and every day and celebrate and praise God. Door F will be open so we can park in that back parking lot. If you're staying for more than one service, thank you, choir, um, that when you park close to the church, you're taking up two parking spots for somebody because somebody could park there at 8 and at 9.30 if your space has been taken out back. And as I said, greet those that you do not know first. Welcome them to St. Luke's. Not quite feeding the 5,000, but invite them down to Fellowship Hall where there will be treats available all morning long. Let us show the hospitality of Christ. So let us not only today, but throughout the week, wave our palm branches and declare, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, King of Israel. Hosanna. 
Hosanna, Hosanna. Amen. Now join me in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 
Led by Christ in our journey of repentance and moved by his compassion, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray for the church that congregations be a home for the lost, a haven for the oppressed, and a source of healing for those broken by life circumstances. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray for new life springing forth from the earth, for those who groan in labor, those who are adopting children, and those who are unable to conceive. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray for Christians who do not have the freedom to worship openly, for political prisoners, refugees, widows, and orphans. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the weary and vulnerable, nurses, hospice workers, child care providers, and social workers. We pray for those in any need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this assembly as it enters this holy week. Sustain our pastor, musicians, staff, volunteers, and all those who will prepare for and lead worship this week and bring us all to the joy of Easter. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We give thanks for the blessed saints who showed us how to live and taught us how to die. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us now join together in prayer that Jesus first taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. During this time now of reflection, we invite those of you that are here to fill out your welcome card. Please share any reflections, questions, or prayers on the back. Also, um, during this time, you may prepare your offering. We have offering plates in the front of the church and in the back. For those online, please feel free to visit our website. Um, take this time now to enjoy. Lift up your hands, ye mighty gates. Behold the King of glory waits. The King of kings is drawn.
invite us to stand and the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share that peace with one another through a wave and um, those of you who are online, share a word of peace in the chat or the comment section, but most of all, let us be people of peace going out sharing the love of Christ with our neighbors. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.